<coughs> Hello, I'm Lynn Barlow, Assistant Vice-Chancellor for Creative and Cultural Industries here at the University of the West of England in Bristol. And I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to you all for this year's annual staff address from our Vice-Chancellor, Professor Steve West. We're recording from inside the film studios at the City Campus at Bower Ashton, and we're delighted to be joined by a number of staff and also some of our film students who are here helping out as members of the technical crew this afternoon, which is a great experience for them. Now, we've got quite a bit to cover over the next 30 minutes or so, specifically Strategy 2030, our vision for the university over the next decade. What does it mean to us as an organisation? What does it mean to us as a faculty, a department, a service, a team, and most importantly, what does it mean to us as individuals? What are our core values and how do we shape them and put them into practice in all that we do? Now, I've got some questions sent in by staff and I'll be putting them to Steve after we've heard from him. So let's do that now. So over to you, Vice-Chancellor, for your 2019 annual address. Thank you very much, uh, Lynn, and thank you everybody for coming today. Uh, I'm delighted to be here. This is a really important uh, part of the year where I get an opportunity to, first of all, say thank you. Thank you to everybody who has worked so hard over the year to ensure that we as a university are doing the best we possibly can for our students. That's what really matters. Now, I'm here to talk about our strategy, our 2030 strategy. Uh, and I'm going to start with a question. What's our future? What does it look like? What is going to be needed over the next 20, 30, 40 years? What's going to be expected of us as a university? And importantly, what are the interplays, the political interplays, the interplays of global knowledge economies, the global climate environment within which we're working? So over the past 18 months, we've been exploring what sort of university are we going to be? What do we want to achieve as a university? How are we going to influence the future, not just of our students, but also of our environment and of our region? So these questions have been worried over. We've explored them with externals from schools, from industry sectors, from political inputs. We've thought very long and hard, and of course we've engaged with you staff and students of the university. The outcome of that has been the creation of the 2030 strategy, a strategy designed to prepare us for the future, a strategy designed to ensure that we do the best we possibly can for our staff and students, a strategy with ambition, of course, but also with a very clear focus about why we exist and what we want to achieve. Within the strategy, which will be launched early next year, we've tried to identify some very simple messages. We've got ambitions. We have priorities. They're set out very clearly across the entire strategy. And it is, as Lynn said, our strategy. We have designed this. Our board has had input and we own it, and it's for us to deliver in partnership with our students. What I want to talk about today and focus on for the remainder of my uh, session is to consider the underlying values for us at the university. To be clear about our purpose, to be clear about the people and the place that we're trying to build together. How does it feel for everybody in the university to work, to live for our students, and of course to learn? How does it feel for every individual? Do they feel that this is a place where they can explore, where they can innovate, where they can create all sorts of new opportunities for themselves, where they feel empowered, for every member of staff and for every student, 
Is this a place where they feel included, where they feel safe, and where they're infused and inspired to want to go on and be the best that they can possibly be? The 2030 strategy creates a platform for us to ensure that that is the lived experience for every student and every member of staff. We should be about transforming futures, not just for our students, but for our staff. We should be about influencing our local communities. We should be about building futures and creating futures for young people who are coming to university. We should be ensuring that we're engaging with global challenges. None of us here are in a position to ignore the climate crisis. None of us here can fail to engage with the scientific evidence that's available to us. What are we going to do over the next few years to ensure that we face up to climate change and deliver a different future for young people? So within our strategy, we explore some of this. But at the end of the day, it will be for us to ensure that the research that we undertake the curriculum that we design and the way in which we engage with every single member of staff and student sees a behavioural and cultural shift where we provide a part of a solution to the global challenges. So our core set of values are what drives us. Values are at the heart of any people organisation. But these values have to be real. Everybody has to own and engage with these values, to live these values if they're to have any impact at all. All of us in this room need to understand what those values mean for us as individuals and collectively for teams. So what I want to do is to start thinking about what those values are about. Five values set within the context of the university a university that wants to be ambitious, a university that wants to be innovative, a university that wants to be enterprising, a university that wants to be inclusive, and I'll come back to that in a minute, and a university that wants to collaborate. Collaborate across the university and beyond the university. So as I continue to speak, take a few moments and reflect on those values from your own positions, from what they will mean to you and how you as individuals and teams will begin to engage to make sure we deliver on those values. For me, as I start to reflect on them, my job is to create a university that is truly inclusive. A university where there is no exclusion where we are not tolerating any racism, where we are not seeing attainment gaps in the performance of our students, and where every single member of staff and every single student absolutely believes they belong in this place. We need to ensure that we empower staff and students to be innovative, to be creative, to begin to try to think differently and do things differently and to be enterprising in their approach, to really challenge themselves and to challenge the teams to think differently about how we do things going forward. I want to create a university with you where everybody thrives and flourishes and succeeds. It has to be a university for all. The diversity of our staff and students is increasing year on year, and that is fantastic. But there are challenges that come with that. We have to understand how to personalise that education experience. We have to ensure that we understand what it means to be a student coming to the university from a different country, from a different culture, and we have to understand how best to support them. And of course, that equally applies to staff and students from the UK. Now as we think about the context within which the university operates, we also have to understand 
that we live in a world that is rapidly changing, where technology is going to challenge us, but is also going to bring with it opportunities. How are we going to grab those opportunities? How are we going to make sure that those opportunities add value to how we operate as an institution? We're not immune, of course, to the political discourse that's going on around us all the time, local, national and international. What will that mean for us as an institution? What will that mean for our staff? What will it mean for our students? How do we ensure that as an institution we keep focused on our ambitions to be better than we are today, to provide better education, better research and better enterprise opportunities? So my challenge as we start to think about launching the 2030 strategy is how can we work together and how can we collaborate beyond the university to deliver an environment that creates those opportunities, that helps us ensure that every member of staff and every student thrives and flourishes and succeeds in their endeavour and that we create the platform for open, honest, inclusive and sometimes challenging conversations to ensure that we provide the best spaces and best place for people to succeed in their careers and their futures. That is what 2030 is designed to deliver and we can do it together with our students, with our partners and of course with our staff. I look forward to working with you all as we deliver that and of course we'll be working with you over the next few months to ensure we absolutely understand that strategy. Thank you. Lots of food for thought, Steve. Um, I've got uh, many questions from staff, but first of all, I'd just like to ask you um, a couple, actually, and I'd really like to talk to you about values. Because mm. values are principles, uh, and you outlined that we, we're ambitious, we definitely need to be inclusive, we need to be innovative. Um, so those are kind of principles of the delivery of the strategy, aren't they? But values are actually about behaviour. They're yeah. about personal behaviour. They're very emotive values. And, mm. and each of us have slightly different values. So enormous change in 20, 2030 strategy, which will affect all of us. How, how are you going to help us understand and keep those values close? Well, I think we get... Uh, the starting place for this is that everybody in the university should have one common goal. The reason we all exist, the reason we're here, of course, is that we believe in the power of education to transform lives. That's not a bad place to be because that's a common theme that we can all sign up to. Everybody in the university also believes in our students. It doesn't matter where you are in the university whether you are an academic, whether you're professional technical staff, whether you're the ground staff, whether you're catering, students matter. Students are the focus. So we've got two things that we build on. And the question therefore is, having focused on why we exist as a university, to create knowledge, to explore knowledge, to use that knowledge in creative ways to push the future forward, through our research and learning and teaching, what are the values that underpin that? So for me, my job is to paint the picture, to paint the big picture and to corral everybody around how are we going to deliver that picture? And the values become, if you like, the flags that we need to follow. So the ambitious piece, we should be ambitious for our staff and our students and for our university. Mm. That ambitious is not, uh, ambition is not about being raw ambition, I'm going to climb to the top of the, the pole. That is about an ambition, a collective ambition to improve, to enhance, to discover, to find solutions uh, and to ensure that people have the opportunity to grow and develop. I think from that we also have to challenge ourselves to be innovative. This place will be very boring if we keep doing the same thing over and over and over again and don't innovate and improve. So innovation has to be at the heart of the university. 
enterprise in culture also has to be at the heart because we're going to have to do things faster, we're going to have to do things smarter, and we're going to have to work out how to be enterprising in all parts of the university. We need to collaborate beyond the university. The university is as good as its people, but it's also as good as the relationships that we build beyond our uh, uh, walls. Can I just stop you there? So when uh, a new member of staff is outside the organisation and they're representing UE, on an external forum, whether it's in Bristol or whether it's in the UK or whether it's internationally, increasingly yep. internationally. Yep. What do you want people to think about them? What do you want people to take away from that meeting about, about that person and therefore about UE? I want them to see that there is uh, a pride in that individual for the place that they work. I want that conversation to end up with, wow, UE is a great place to be. It's an inspirational place to be. This is a place that cares, it does stuff that makes a difference. And if we can get that out into the world and we can make sure that every member of staff and every student is our ambassador when they're with us and when they leave us, that is something very magical. So it's making the students as well feel um, absolutely valued within the walls of the faculties and campuses, isn't it? So I've got some questions which yep. cover a few of those things from the staff. So let's take let's take a, the, the big question of climate change. So it says, this, this question, I'm going to read it verbatim, it says, a priority for Strategy 2030 is to create a sustainable university which recognises the climate change and environment emergency, as you've already said. Notably, to work towards net emissions of greenhouse gases by 2030. Mm. Could you expand on some of the things we'll be working on to achieve this target and the importance of the climate emergency to you personally? To me personally. To okay. you personally. <laughs> right. um, the starting place is that organisations, governments, organisations all have a part to play, but individuals, every single person in the university has a massive part to play, number one. We have been on a journey s really for the last 10, 15 years as an institution where we've tried to think about our impact on the environment. So the work that was done in the 2020 strategy to move us uh, down the line in terms of reducing our carbon footprint is something that we are continuing and accelerating. So the energy that we buy is from wind farms. That, that's a fantastic step forward. The combined heat and power systems that we're putting in are designed to reduce carbon from the university. The way in which we are trying to influence external infrastructure in terms of public transport helps again. So there are lots of things that we point to that we can say that is having a significant impact. But we can also do more in terms of education, so ensuring that we build into the curriculum for every single student the, the ability to begin to engage at an individual level with what they can do. Similarly with staff. So staff thinking about how do they contribute? How do we start to reduce, not just in the university, but at home, how do we reduce our carbon footprints? So there's an education piece here which has been an important theme. We've got very ambitious targets in 2030. We think and those that advise us that we're working with beyond the university, we think it's doable. But it's only doable if everybody plays their part. And do you think we ought to have some kind of public, um, uh, I mean, on the website somewhere, which says what we're actually doing and how we're getting there? Because actually, when you, s you, know, when you say those things about yep. wind power, yep. uh, you know, and the banning of plastics, all of that kind of stuff, that's yep. great. But actually to remind us yeah. that that's a it's core value. It is there, it is on the website. We can amplify it and we will be amplifying it. The 2030 strategy uh, is the mother document, if you like. It is the platform and there will be a sustainability and there has been a sustainability strategy that sits mm -hmm. below it. As that becomes crisper, that will be amplified on websites and that will become, I'm sure, something that both staff and students will engage with. Interestingly, the student union and the student body has been fantastic in pushing us forward on this agenda. This matters. I mean, frankly, young people think we've really messed up. Uh, and they're and quite right to think that. And they are quite right to think that. I also think we have a responsibility to put pressure back into government and governments across the globe. Because frankly, they are being a bit lame at the moment and we need to make sure that we're accelerating some of their thinking. So that, yeah, that is 
this next question picks up on that about you thinking, you know, you're saying how we can influence uh, the policy agendas, whether it's government internationally, because actually higher education is a huge industrial sector now. You know, if we really look at it, mm. 15, 20 years ago, it wasn't. Now, it's one of the biggest players in terms of money into the local economy and, you know, being able to punch above its weight, really. This question really goes to the heart of that. Okay. So... How do we assess the risks attached to recruitment? And they give the example of sourcing student accommodation in Bristol. Now, I know you know all about this, Steve. <laughs> Are the resources available to not just find a place on a programme? Yeah. And we've done that. You've made huge investments in estate. Yep. Uh, we're all constantly working to, to strive on the best facilities, the best academic teams, the best technical teams. Um, so, you know, we've got the programmes covered but also how do you avoid harming the student experience in relation to accommodation? Now, you know as well as I do the debate out there, whether it's here, whether it's in Bath, whether it's in Gloucester, there, are, there is too much student accommodation in a city. We hear it all the time, don't yeah. you? But actually, yeah. for the size of our sector, there probably isn't. No, and the challenge really is how do you create good student accommodation that doesn't disrupt uh, the environment to the degree where actually it's impacting on local residents in a negative way. The, the, f the future has to be about how do you mix communities up in a positive way. And the challenge for us is working with local authorities and ensuring that as we're going through and as they're thinking about planning, they're planning and they're d putting in urban design that is creative and innovative and fun and mixes communities and students are part of those communities. What we're doing at, at the university is, there's a series of conversations we've had, for example, around intergenerational living and creating intergenerational flats uh, that bring students and older people together and they work with each other. That's quite an innovative program um, and we're reasonably well down the track on that. But we're also investing in, uh, we hope, an additional 2,000 student beds on the French A campus. In pods? No, probably not in pods, uh, but we are learning from the experiences of the uh, pods. Interestingly, the students who are there uh, now I've met, uh, and they are really liking them. And we've got feedback from them, we've put in s more social space for them, in fact that's arrived now. Um, and they're giving us feedback all the time. And in fact, some of them are saying, can we be here next year? So this is a journey we're on. We are exploring it. And as we think about the 2000 new residences, they will be mixed accommodation. They will be of different sorts. We will be innovative in the designs. We're trying to, to create them um, within uh, a framework um, which, is, which is passive. In other words, completely carbon neutral. Now that's a big challenge, uh, the construction techniques need to be innovative, but we're making progress. Do you think, um, you know, you've been in this business quite a long time, you've written a few strategic documents, we've seen a really, a really big growth in higher education. Do you think the accommodation piece of, of that growth was perhaps not seen to have the impact that, you know, not, you didn't sort of future think, oh, the impact of this number of students is going to be this on our communities? I think what we've seen in Bristol um, is quite challenging because uh, Bristol uh, is a growing city, city region, and we haven't seen necessarily the investment both within student accommodation, but we certainly haven't seen the investment in uh, accommodation and living spaces for the population. So Bristol is hot, sort of in quotes. <coughs> it is very expensive. Uh, in terms of accommodation and the and the private rental market. It is a great place to live. Though. But it is, it's a fantastic place to be. It, it, it's in the best places to live. Uh, uh, so it, not surprisingly, that attracts students and it attracts uh, other people. It's also economically very vibrant. So it has a very great mix in terms of the economy. It's an attractor. We're now beginning to, I guess, catch up. There's mm. more building going on. Um, it has been thought about, it is being better designed. Um, we're going into a master planning process over the next uh, six months that will create an urban plan and then master plan for the university. And that will consider 
social spaces, outdoor spaces and the buildings and how we connect all of that together. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about the, the principal plan or the master plan as, you, as you've mm. just called it. Um, here's a question relating to that. The strategy document talks about an enterprise campus. Yeah. Can you say a bit more about what this would bring to the university and importantly, how would it, how would it be funded and what are the implications for places like Glenside and indeed City Campus? Okay. Um, the concept of the enterprise campus really is having looked at universities across the globe um, the successful universities are able to bring activity that's relevant to the future of a university close to the university. So the Enterprise Campus is a concept which is how do we begin to connect with industry, how do we connect with jobs for the future in an environment where our students can benefit and where we can benefit in terms of research and enterprise and our learning and teaching. And it is about looking at our footprint as a university. We're in a really privileged place. We've got a very large campus with land that currently is not developed on, but is developable. So it has permissions. So we've been starting to think about a technology park, bringing science and technology into some of that space. We've been thinking about hotels, conference centres. We've been thinking, of course, about student accommodation. And we've also been thinking about new academic accommodation that would also grow as part of that. And we've been thinking about affordable living also to support our staff. Increasingly, staff who are finding it difficult to be able to afford. Now, how do we, how do we finance all of that? Well, the first thing to say is, as a university, it's going to be about how we collaborate and partner. So the Board of Governors are currently working with us to explore what funding options are there, how might we do joint ventures, how might we use the council, the local authority, unitary authority, their planning powers, and how might we partner to create new buildings. So, for example, I'm not going to pay for a hotel and conference centre. But what I can do is enter into a partnership where we lease the land and then begin to think about other people putting the capital in and as part of that deal and package we talk to them about the sorts of academic programs, the sorts of research, the sorts of part-time employment, all of those things that would come to the university. So it's about thinking creatively and differently and how do we benefit from that? Well, when I've been around UK universities and international universities, Actually, hotels and conference centres do really well on university campuses. And if you think about our location on a main railway line electrified to London with a transport infrastructure that's good for roads, I know we all moan about it, but actually where we are, it's not that bad. And you've got big industry around us that's also looking for high value, high end hotel, Ministry of Defence, Airbus all of those. It's an arena we want though, it's an arena. Well there's an arena being planned for <laughs> up the road, that's you know I'm not going to get into that debate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it does sound like you're you know you're planning a, a, a small city actually. Well it is a small city, it's, it's, it, it, th there's no doubt and that's why we're doing the urban plan. The urban plan is how do you create spaces and places, a destination that really energizes and inspires staff and students where they want to be there. We're, we're challenging ourselves saying the future is about a 24 seven campus, vibrant, alive, engaging, that really attracts people. We're also saying that actually the models of the future are not about a single intake of students a year. Mm. We've just, uh, we're just uh, delivering uh, the police apprenticeship. The police apprenticeship, which is a fantastic innovation, is six intakes a year mm. at the moment. Now imagine what that means in terms of how the university has to work in order to deliver six intakes a year. It is nothing like the standard routine that we have at the moment. So that's why I'm saying we've got to be innovative and creative and, and the technologies will help us as we move forward. But we have to challenge ourselves to do things differently. Okay, just bring you back to, to one part of that question. I mean, it sounds fantastic if you are based in French, um, but behalf, on behalf of my colleagues here, 
how do how do they not feel that they're not getting a piece of the action or my colleagues in Glenside? Fantastic. Well, this the, the t obviously the teams down here have had the part of the action way, way ahead of anyone else having yeah, action. Yeah, we haven't got a hotel and a conference centre and, you, you know. You, you're part of the university, so stop thinking that you're an outpost. You are part and core of the university, a really important part. And the city centre campus, remember that is what the vision was, was about engaging with the creative industry sectors who happen to be of course yeah. in the city center so you're absolutely in the right place it's how do we capitalize on that and how do we make sure that we continue to invest so it's not about you've had your investment handbrake on let's not do any more uh, it is about continuing that investment and for student accommodation we were working locally to try and ensure that there was additional student accommodation down here unfortunately mm. the city planners didn't want to play we've got to find a different solution Glenside is a really interesting one. We are looking at what options are there for Glenside. Glenside is, is predominantly health. It is hugely popular. It is attracting students um, and increasing numbers of students. And internationally, there are huge global opportunities. So we have to find a way of ensuring that investment and the ability to grow continues for that particular faculty. Okay, so we haven't really got very much time left, so I'm, I'm just going to ask you two, two questions, really. So one, one looking back to help you think about going forward, and my historian colleagues would tell me that's exactly the right thing to do. So looking back at strategy 2020, okay, if you could change one bit of it, if, if, if one bit of it didn't work, or there's some really strong learning from, what is that now in hindsight? Well, almost in hindsight. Three almost in hindsight. A year, a year left. I Something that you're not going to be able to achieve in the next year. Okay. I'd love to have started it earlier. Okay. I, I think we, we weren't ambitious fast enough. That's, that's probably always the way. Um, what we haven't resolved, really, uh, is the attainment gaps uh, that are significant, mm. are unacceptable, um, we haven't resolved that, and that is a priority for the next, the next strategy. So what are you most excited about, about 2030? Because we are starting it quite early, actually, if you, if you feel yeah. we were a bit late off the, yeah. the blocks for the last one. Uh, what I'm really excited about is we've got a solid platform to, to, to develop from. 2020, we've achieved a huge amount. I looked back, and it is amazing, and it's down to hard work, and it's down to everybody in the university working together. I think we've got the ability to be even more courageous and even more innovative and to move at pace with 2030. So what I'm looking forward to, uh, frankly, is being more innovative and more enterprising and with that, more empowering. Yeah, I mean, uh, finally, because I, I guess we would all say uh, a decade is a long time and, and uh, each decade throws up new challenges, but I think it's, our, it's probably not far off the mark to say that this next decade, with automation mm. particularly, will be one of the most challenging post-war. Yeah, but that's hugely exciting as well. It's challenging, but there are op opportunities within there. And, and 10 years might sound a long time. It is two and a half undergraduate cohorts coming through the university. Yeah. That's not very much time at all. And I want to make sure that we move at pace because I want those students who are joining us to see some of the benefits. It's not good enough to promise this year's intake. It'll all be fantastic in three years' time. We've got to do that now. Well, that's a good challenge, Steve. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we really do have to stop now. Uh, a huge thank you to you for coming. Um, a really big thank you to my technical and academic colleagues um, in the film and journalism department. They've done a great job. And thank you very much to the students. I hope you found it a really good experience. Um, see you next year. <laughs>